Hello, and welcome to this tutorial for Workers and Resources, the One Year Plan. This tutorial is specially for uh, the realistic mode within the game, and will ensure that you have after one year a working city with 500 citizens or more. You'll have supply facilities for boards, bricks, gravel, asphalt and concrete. And you'll have a farm that is ready to sow before the next year. Want to show you how that's done? Keep watching. The one year plan looks a bit uh, like this in overview. We are going to make three dis different areas. Uh, one is the distribution offices, which are as close to the custom house as possible. Then we'll have some storage yards and we'll have a construction site where we'll build our first city. At the custom house I place four distribution offices. They will be specialized for their jobs. The first one will do just fuel and liquids and will contain only oil tankers. The second one will do aggregates and will contain only the big dumpers. The third one will do materials and will contain only open hulls. And the fourth one will have a mix of, of covered hulls and covered refrigerators which will work as our um, supply chain for warehouses and shops. Next there are also three construction offices which will get all their materials from the custom house. We have one for covered hulls and concrete. We have one for road construction because the road construction will start at the, uh, at the custom house. And last we have the foreign workers which contain buses to pick up foreign workers at the custom house. There is also a gas station and a technical office. The technical office will have the water distribution because that is picked up at the custom house. The storage yard setup is twofold. We'll start with the first part. That's the big aggregate storage which will house our gravel. The gravel will be uh, connected to a aggregate loading station so we can use the gravel. It will have an asphalt plant and a concrete plant connected to it. So we have our own asphalt and our own concrete uh, at disposal which much faster loading rates than the custom house and also um, our shorter commute. Uh, also on this site are the heating plant and the garbage dump and incinerator. They both are quite polluting but yeah uh, that's why they're at this spot close to the bus stop so they can have workers. Um, also a uh, bricks factory and a wood cutters uh, post and a sawmill both connected to a storage yard for easy pickup of their materials. Boards and bricks of course. The second part of the construction of this uh, storage yard setup uh, are the construction offices among other things. Um, I'll first start with the construction offices that I'm planning to keep. These are the ones that are going to, uh, one of these is going to be built as the first uh, construction project. Uh, two of 12, one of six. I'll explain later why I use this uh, setup, but basically they're going to be specialized again for either non-road or road construction. You'll see. Next, uh, then I want, of course, electricity to keep everything uh, powered, so I place it where I have everything uh, connected with a green line. I also place my sewage and water uh, distribution here, so everything uh, has sewage and water connection, and the sewage and water can be collected from, the, yeah, from these two points, instead of every individual building.
Next up are the free uh, storage yards, the free aggregate storage and uh, three times a free material storage. Uh, we're planning to abandon these within a year, all three of them, or actually all four. Um, the reason is because their loading time is pretty long, so that takes too much time to, to collect materials from these. Uh, we're also going to get our construction offices. Um, we're going to place four in this vicinity. Also a uh, gas station, of course. Um, the four construction offices are also specialized. One will be specially for excavators, one will be specially for road cranes, one for dumpers and one for open hulls. And uh, uh, the open hulls and dumpers will merge into the first construction office that will build. We have come to the final piece of our uh, initial setup for the one year plan, and that is our uh, city area. We have to consider two important distances. C pollution carries around 600 meters from the heating plant and the incinerator. And the heating pipe have a thousand meter range before they need a heating pump again. So I like to build my city in between 600 and 1000 meters, and I use this measurement tool to guide me with two points, so I know in between where I have to build. This is 400 meters, which is also around the maximum walking distance for your citizens. Um, then I just use the cloning technique and I use the, um, yeah, what is it, the grid layout to get a bit of a normal uh, straight uh, layout, but completely you know, in grid you'll never make it and don't worry about it, just make sure that you can place footpaths in between your buildings. When I'm building this I'm actually forgetting about um, the cinema, so later I will replace one of the flats uh, with um, the hospital and put the cinema where the hospital is roughly uh, but main concern is that every flat needs to be able to walk to the main surfaces which are in this case uh, the food and drinks or food and meat actually uh, they want to have pub they want to have uh, schooling uh, kindergarten and they want to be able to go to the hospital also culture is very important and yeah, that's about it Okay, now we have the boring part out of the way. We can uh, go to the uh, more more dynamic part of the game. We'll start the simulation. Uh, first, we'll get in our uh, vehicles, where I have a specific order of appearance, where I first bring in two fuel tankers, then one aggregate dumper, and then three material um, open hulls for the material uh, distribution office. And I have them get supplies. This takes time. Once they have appeared, I'm uh, bringing in my road uh, construction team, that's the gravel road construction team. 
and they're going to start graveling immediately because without gravel on a mud road rain is your enemy it will slow down everything after the road team has been assigned uh, we start with the uh, dumpers open hall excavators and covered hall and this is all to get the groundwork started for the first construction office I use only two concrete mixes at the start. Um, most projects that will start will need one load of concrete. Except for the construction office, it need two. So that will mean that we'll start with the concrete for the construction office and then later on we can do two projects at the same time. Also our dumpers of four allow us to do the groundwork for two projects at the same time. When you're done the ground works, I start the next project. So that's four projects going, and most of them have three phases. So in the end, I'll work on six projects simultaneously uh, with just uh, two concrete mixers, at least at start. The one year plan has uh, one uh, aim, and that is to minimize the use of foreign labor of course i have to use it at start but later on we'll try to use our own uh, um, how to say domestic labor's workforce as much as possible after the groundwork for the uh, construction office is done we can start with the electricity and that means the substation and the uh, exchanger Our groundwork is almost done, and now there's a little game I always play in trying to time to get in the foreign workers at the groundwork phase, but once they arrive, they'll start laying bricks. And if that's then more than 25 uh, workers, the first phase will be done really quick and speeds up our progression uh, a little bit. And yeah, the first construction office is already done. It merges uh, the open hulls and the uh, dumpers and even gets some extra of both. So that speeds up uh, the hauling of materials for groundwork, road construction, footpaths, a lot of things. We have come to the next step in our process and that is uh, finishing up our gravel station, our gravel storage and conveyor belt that connects them. So we have access to gravel close by to our constructions and we're going to make a small storage yard where we're going to keep steel and prefab panels. Next order of building is uh, sewage and water where it's just a really small project, the garbage dump, the bus stop, and the heating plant. These are all the necessary utilities I need to uh, get my city going. I like to gravel all the access roads to my uh, imported buildings such as the um, garbage dump and the bus stop but also the gravel station beforehand because yeah when you do it later uh, it will interrupt of course production. You can time your next construction by seeing if there are any dumpers available. If there's one dumper available, it will mean that there is uh, yeah, room for the next uh, project, which then needs two dumpers. As soon as the next dumper then appears in your, in your construction yard, 
you'll know okay I can do the next one again. The open halls should be plenty. I like to start with one uh, one road gravel between custom house and uh, and the storage yards, so I'll have a quick uh, supply. We use a small storage yard for the steel and prefab because yeah we're unable to produce uh, either of them, and yeah it will take a big chain of production to start producing. Uh, once the storage yard and the gravel done is done we find this one completed. Up to the next phase. Okay, now we're going to turn our attention to the construction site. We're going to build the buildings that are needed to invite our first citizens so they will not be unhappy and leave. We're going to have them a little bit unhappy, but not so unhappy that they will uh, will desert, or what is it, they'll, they'll run away. Um, in order to do that, we need a couple of things. Uh, power, water, sewage, we'll need a food and meat um, distribution site, that's going to be our uh, shopping center. We'll also need um, something that gives them culture, sports, and a pub. And then also they want to have healthcare. So those are the buildings we are going to build or pre-build and then uh, we're going to invite the citizens and, and let them finish the building of some buildings. <laughs> Two buildings are going to be completed, those are the pub and the small shopping center so they can be supplied beforehand, else um, yeah, we'll need to wait for the trucks to arrive once these buildings are finished and that takes too much time and people will get unhappy. There will be a lot of buildings that need bricks, but you can, how do you say, bypass it by building one building, one project that is bricks and one project that is not bricks. In that way you will not deplete or, how do you say, have to wait too long for all the bricks to be delivered. Of course you can speed this up by putting in the fifth distribution office, but I'm saving it for uh, the farm. Yeah, here I'm turning off uh, the Get Citizens, I forgot it. Hence the importance of autosaves. Here you see that we'll be now working at uh, footpaths. Now the main buildings that I'm going to use, even the fire station, have their groundworks done. So when the groundworks is done, the excavators have uh, no other jobs. and. I use them for this. In this case I forgot about the heating pipe, which actually delays my um, invitation of citizens, but not to an uh, extent that it was a problem. Well again I do a little check uh, every time before uh, I invite uh, my first citizens. You can see that the second building is done now. Uh, do I have everything? Do we have everything? Yes. Then we'll continue construction on the first building that I want to have built. We now have come to one of the unique points of the one year plan and that is that we'll get our citizens already in 
by August 28, 1970. I'm going to invite uh, Soviet immigrants first. There will be a mix of educated and highly educated workers who are going to work first in um, our school and kindergarten and the hospital. Those three are my most important things at start. When these buildings have finished, I continue the construction on the cinema and uh, later on on the fire station. Uh, we are starting the bus surface towards the heating plant. Um, the temperature is still at uh, 20 plus degrees, but it will drop soon now. Also, there is a, a strategy that I use where I separate my highly educated workers from low educated or basic educated workers. In that way I can send my highly educated workers to work in the uh, school and the hospital only. So I have uh, teachers and doctors uh, al always at hand. I can educate my uh, third world immigrants in that way. And I can also uh, keep my citizens healthy so they will also be happy. Another strategy I like to use is the what I called help your neighbors strategy. Is where one, uh, once one flat is finished, I let them help out the neighboring buildings that need to be constructed. In, so I do not drain my whole uh, yeah, workforce from the city, just from the latest building that has been built. And that most of the times has not been assigned yet. There's an uh, electricity question. What is the maximum output of an electric substation per hour? The box of a substation states 2.5 megawatts. But what does that mean? There's one general tip I will, uh, <laughs> will not withhold you, is do not use the bulldozer. It is a very crude mechanism. You better um, take out the, the thing you want specifically. So the road or maybe the uh, power line. You, you'll destroy something you regret. We have uh, built our fourth uh, building, so now we're separating the highly educated workers from the low educated workers. I'll even invite a little bit more and uh, put them to work to the hospital and the school only. The next step is going to be the farm setup. That actually took me quite a while to get this uh, accurate. There is a uh, there are multiple tutorials on how to build a farm with the railroad and stuff, but how to do it for the realistic mode with just roads, there was actually no uh, not really a tutorial. So I start out with the fields to get away from uh, the city for at least 500 uh, meters, so they will not be uh, bothered by the pollution. And I'm going to set up um, my farm fields in such a way that they will be easy accessible for my farm. I'm going to use a medium farm and 18 fields. 18 fields because the maximum amount of destinations for a distribution office is 20. And I want them to have to be able to go to both grain silos. Okay, when we're going to place uh, the farm, we're going to use the factory connections between the farm, the grain silo, and the fabric factory to its maximum. This 
fabric factory is actively going to get the crops out of the grain cell silo it will actively put fabric into the clothing factory and the other clothing factory will actively take the fabric factory from the first uh, the fabric from the first clothing factory you still got it so again we have crops coming from the distribution office and from the farm into the grain silo it goes from the grain silo to the fabric factory and the fabric that goes out of the fabric factory into the clothing factory will be shared with the other clothing factory and also the pickup of clothes can be done at one of the two factories because they also share the clothing warehouse so that's it that really took me a couple of times to adjust um, I'll have space on the right side of the farm fields where I can put uh, a food factory and a distiller but that's for the three years plan which we'll work on later. Uh, we still need to um, make the concrete uh, plant work and it will need uh, water uh, supply. The water supply for the concrete plant can be of low quality, 60%, I say out of the top of my head. Uh, we're going for 90 plus here, but don't forget this will get polluted by the incinerator. When the concrete plant is finished, you want to have your concrete mixes, of course, move towards the concrete plant. finishing the brick factory um, the time has passed to uh, January 1971 and when the bricks factory is done um, will almost be done with the one-year plan we'll also of course need to finish the um, finish the uh, farm I use a combination at first of uh, four sowing mechanisms, five uh, of the combines to harvest and three uh, or concrete hulls to um, hold the, uh, the crops. They'll be assisted with the fifth distribution office which then also supply three covered hulls. Okay, let's do a recap. We have built a gravel storage and material storage. We have uh, se been setting up the buildings in the construction area so we could invite our citizens. We have taken in those citizens. We have kept them happy. Their happiness is now at 97%. We've constructed the asphalt, concrete, boards and brick supply. And we've constructed a farm. This concludes the uh, one year plan. We'll have now a current population of uh, 567. Happiness, health and balance are all nice. We have just spent one year in game. Thank you for your attention.